So hi, I'm here at Martin Spick's house in Berlin. We just had a wonderful tasting dinner at the St. Moritz Hotel where we had a sneak preview of the 2010 vintage. Um, I also spoke before coming to Berlin in Washington DC to Mark Wessels, uh, the director of MacArthur Beverages, to get his sense of what he's looking forward to in Bordeaux when he visits next month. Here with Mark Wessels at MacArthur Beverages, uh, just before On Premier 2010 in Bordeaux, um, you are going to Bordeaux. Absolutely, wouldn't wouldn't miss it. Uh, and I, this is probably my 12th year in a row. Uh, I'm, I may have missed one year uh, amongst those last 12, but basically I've I've probably been to at least 12 of them uh, in the past 13 years. And what are you expecting this year? Well, I'll taste a bunch of good wine, as, as always. It looks, uh, reports on 2010 are very strong. It is undoubtedly uh, a very good vintage. Of course, the question always, is it very good or is it sensational? And then really, how does it compare to previous vintages? And that's what going year after year really gives you some background, gives you some experience. You're able to compare this vintage to some previous vintage, which perhaps isn't always fair, but it at least gives you some uh, 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 a good way of thinking about vintages is how they compare to other ones. Mark, behind you I noticed, you know, prices grimping upwards with Bordeaux. There's a Canon La Gaffaire that you're selling, the 2004 vintage, it's $20 less than the 2006 vintage, and I'm sure the 2009 is even more expensive. Yeah, yes. well, you must be concerned about prices, the euro dollar exchange rate. I definitely am, and you're, you use the word creeping up. Uh, I, I, for many of these chateaus, uh, they've, they've skyrocketed it, I think. Uh, and I, in fact, I just bought euros today uh, at, at a very weak rate. The dollar is not strong. So it is a concern. Uh, of course, it's really a small number of chateaus uh, that have raised their prices significantly. But of course, it's all the ones you know and love, uh, the famous uh, properties. There is undoubtedly a worldwide demand now uh, on these wines. Uh, there are a lot of emerging markets, uh, we'll call them, uh, that are buying class growth Bordeaux that weren't buying it five or ten years ago. And that's definitely put a pressure on the price to go up. There is certainly a limited uh, supply. So, but it's a concern for me. Um, my clients who have been buying wine for a number of years for the most part aren't, aren't used to some of the high prices prices and it's given them some sticker shock I'm afraid. Are you going to try and find maybe some lower price Bordeaux, undiscovered Bordeaux? Do you think customers are ready for that or are well, they still expecting the Cru Classes at a certain price? Yeah, yeah, we've, we've always done relatively well with Cru Bourgeois and Petit Chateaus and I, I buy them uh, and I buy them heavily in good vintages. But it's not the same. The person who was collecting Coste Estronel or Ducru Bocayou or Angelus He's not going to then start buying some unknown uh, Cru Bourgeois Petit Chateau. Uh, he may buy another class growth uh, that's perhaps less expensive, perhaps uh, a Gourde La Rose or a Talbot compared to a Lieve Lascasse or a Pichon Lalande. But the, that, the wine collector, the wine connoisseur for the most part, and, and particularly when he's buying wines for his collection, he's looking for the big names. He's, you know, it's one thing to buy petites for drinking, but you're not buying those for, for collecting typically. So it's a different, it's a different game uh, uh, with those wines. Finally, how important will be the Parker numbers this well, year? Well, as usual, very important. Uh, uh, that was never in better evidence uh, than last year with the 2009 vintage, which again, undoubtedly a terrific vintage, but they came out at extraordinarily high prices because of very high scores from Robert Parker. I wonder if that can happen again with 2010. Uh, everything I'm hearing is the vintage is probably equal in quality to 2009. If Parker gives them extremely high scores, then no doubt we will see extremely high prices. Um, I'm, I don't know. For some reason, I'm wondering if he will give them as high as scores. Uh, uh, but I'm, I'm now not very optimistic that the pricing is going to be uh, is going to come down compared to 09. I think it's going to pretty much be even with 09, unless again, unless the scores are, are down significantly. So we shall see. We'll be there the first week of April to taste the wines. The the chateaus really don't start offering them until May June, and so that's that's when the truth comes out. <laughs> so stay tuned. All right, we'll we'll talk again in Bordeaux. Great. I Good. hope to see you there. Okay, and, great. and I'm sure I will. Yes, we will. <laughs> 
So Martin, uh, I'm, I'm at your place. Hi, hi, hi. Mama. <laughs> uh, it was Welcome. really, it was, thank you. It was very interesting last night, wasn't it, to taste Cloforte and uh, uh, Leuvu Poiffer? Well, yes, it was a wonderful tasting. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. So um, I got a few clips of you and of Nikos Rechenberg uh, making some comments along with Didier Cuvillier and Mathieu Cuvillier. And here they are. Uh, so I'm here with Didier Cuvillier in Berlin, and we're trying. The 2010 vintage. In, ex in exclusivity. In exclusivity. Before the En Primo, yes. Oh, yes. So this is a Louisville Poiffer 2010. Um, we're pouring it for Martin Zwick, who is a blogger in Berlin. He's got his blog Berlin Kitchen. He's very active in the wine scene here. And so he's going to give us a sense of his thoughts of Louisville Poiffer 2010 spontaneously. You know. We're at Saint Moritz restaurant just before a major dinner. It's a very, very concentrated look you have there, Martin. What are you thinking? Oh, wonderful balance. Yeah. Magic balance. Great. Mm. Lovely silky texture. Really. So much craze, wonderful. Wow. So you have uh, a lot of tannin like last year, but a little more acidity and just about the same alcohol, 14. Smooth tannin. Smooth tannin, yeah. So what do you think, the great vintage? Or very, very good vintage? The wizard condition will be perfect. This is, is a second trilo trilogy after, after 80, 88, 89, 1990, 08, 09, 010. And Mathieu, what, what are the um, grapes here? What, you got about 85 Merlot? Yes, mostly, mostly Merlot. So mm. um, uh, this blend is 87% uh, 80, Merlot, 3% mm. uh, Cabernet Franc, and 10% Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm. There's a little bit more Merlot than usual. A little bit, yes. Okay. Why is that? Because Mer Merlot were very, very, very good this, this year, so we, we put a little bit more than usual. <laughs> I think, honestly, this vintage 2010 is, is great for the Merlot on the right bank and great for the Cabernet on the, on the left bank. So, finally, everybody is happy with this. Uh, mm -hmm. What's your verdict, Martin? It's quite similar to Lampel Poiffer. I'm really impressed by the, by the balance, also by the craze, by the elegance of this of this wine already at this stage and also offer so much drinking pleasure. Wow, magic. There's quite a bit of, uh, it's, you have high alcohol levels, don't you? Mm -hmm. what, 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 what was the, you know, like... Yes, um, in fact, this vintage is very impressive for a lot of figures um, for alcohol. It's around uh, 15. Um, it's, we never I have never had such a um, percentage of uh, anthocyan, IPT for tannins, etc. So that's very high for this vintage, and everything is very high. So the potential of the vintage is huge, I think. And uh, this is a big point and very important point. But the other point is the testing, and the testing is very interesting because you have this structure, the powerful of the vintage, and you have a good balance sheet because we have finally very high acidity uh, compared to 09, for example. The acidity is, 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 is lower. Higher. Yes, oh, yeah. much higher. And uh, so it's very interesting for aging. And okay. uh, so I'm sure this is vintage. Uh, today it's a little bit more powerful than 09. And, uh, and the potential to edge is, I think, better than 09, maybe. Because of the acidity. Yeah. Okay.